With Tim O'Malley and John Bryce, I'm Tim Priester. This is our instant analysis. We just spent some time with Marcus Freeman. He was asked the question about play calling and decision making and looking to your assistant coaches uh, for additional help in the play calling. He said there isn't a problem with the play calling. He has no problem with the play calling, that it's a matter of execution. I think, guys, that that is always a combination of two, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, the execution and, and, and certainly the play calling is, is front and center at this point, especially the short yardage stuff. Well, it's front and center for me after the Louisville, during and after the Louisville game, I thought from start to finish. I didn't think that adjustments were made. I didn't think the plan actually, once they realized Louisville was going to get a push on them, there was not a really way around what seemed like an obvious plan, which was to push Louisville up and down the field with your offensive line. The offensive line had its worst game in a long time. I do believe part of that, or a portion of that, is because they were the oddity of of rotating linemen in game number seven when they did not rotate in games number one, two, and four when they could have easily rotated linemen against lesser foes. I believe it's a little bit of a refresh and a reboot going to USC. I think you'll see a better offense. That sounds ridiculous because, of course, you're going to see a better offense than you saw last week. But there's some play calling involved, and I think they're going to have to clean things up, as you said, on third down especially and staying out of, and this leads us into another part, staying out of third and long. There's not that many great play calls for third and 13. Yeah. John, the, the shuffling along the offensive line, when I went back and looked, I thought Billy Schroth played pretty well. He got overrun that one time, but other than that, I thought he played pretty well. But your perspective – uh, where they are with the the play calling and and just the offense in general. Well, you guys know uh, very candidly throughout August, I thought that there would be some some shuffling at the guard position all the way through September uh, again because nobody just took it over. There were some good camps that were produced, but nobody just took it over and said, "I want to be an Outland Trophy candidate this year as a guard." And and so you felt like there might be some more of that early on, especially because injuries happen and guys don't stay healthy typically up front for an entire season. You know, there's so many nicks and bruises, ankles knees, everything. So I thought there would be rotation, but I thought it would be earlier. Um, I do look at the execution, particularly of the offensive line in the last two weeks, and it's been back-to-back -back the worst performances mm -hmm. that we've seen, the lowest rushing total under Marcus Freeman in his 20 regular season games occurred this past weekend at Louisville with just 44 net yards on 28 attempts. Really, really poor there. The play calling has to be better, um, and they have to figure out what they have. I think a week before at Duke, they started off okay play calling, and then they were incredibly limited by what they didn't have. And I still think that they very clearly didn't trust what they had back this past week to perform. I think it's a fair question once Faison plays and he earns that football yeah. scholarship at that point, why didn't we see him again? Especially because, frankly, Louisville looked faster than you. Whether that was because Louisville was fresher than you, whether that's because Louisville is in some spots already faster than you because of the work that the Cardinals did out of the transfer portal, you've got to find some some solutions. Notre Dame will be playing their eighth game in a row. Marcus Freeman was asked about whether his team at this stage, especially this past week, it, it looked like they were a tired football team and – like any head coach would, he doesn't want to use that as an excuse. I don't think he wants his players to, to turn to that as an excuse. But the fact of the matter is it's eight straight weeks. Many teams will be playing for the seventh straight week. Uh, you know, I do think that it's overplayed a little bit. Night games, marquee games, quality opponents, I think it all contributes to it, Tim. Well, I did think they looked slow. I think they looked tired pregame, postgame, during the game all throughout the, all, everything I saw of the team this week and they look tired. Uh, it's midterms this week. That's great for Notre Dame usually. I'm being sarcastic. Last, By the way, last year midterms right before Stanford game. Uh, I did talk to a ex-Notre Dame coach and he said midterms is a real problem at Notre Dame. This is not a made-up situation. However, it is USC. Mentally, you better be crisp and if you're not, you don't belong on the football team. And Marcus Freeman kind of hinted at that today. If this was, if it was backwards and Notre Dame was pulling in Pittsburgh or Duke right now or Louisville, you would really have a problem getting ready for a situation like that. This is USC. It's probably a good thing that midterms and all these things are going on right now. This is the ultimate time to bounce back. It is your only opportunity to bounce back from that horrible loss is if you beat USC. That makes a lot of people forget that you lost to Louisville. If you were to go out and beat Pitt right now, nobody would forget you lost to Louisville. A little housekeeping, JB. Uh, some players coming back, much needed this week. Thomas Harper will be back in Nickelback. It's an ideal time to get him back with USC in town. Gabe Rubio is expected to be back in the lineup. That's good. Part of the um, shuffling along the offensive line apparently had something to do with Pat Coogan having a bit of a knee problem. Yeah. Again, I thought Billy Strouth played pretty well. I would imagine he'll get another opportunity. Uh, 
Blake Fisher left the game late because of a hand injury, and that was why we saw Tosh Baker. But where where do you think they are with this uh, JB, and uh, what do you think happens next with the rotation on the offensive line? Well, I, I think I'd be stunned if we see much rotation this right. week against USC. It was um, it just didn't work. Now, if Pat Coogan can't go, I think you feel a little bit better about a Billy Shrouth because of what you saw against saw out of him against a very quality opponent. Um, you need Blake Fisher. To me, more important or equally as important to the physical state of the offensive line is the mental state. You've got to work a lot to get their confidence back up. They're getting beat up a lot. They were great. They were even great when they set the tone against Ohio. Ohio State late and, and put Notre Dame in every position to carve a signature win. They have not been great since that drive. They've had some moments and they were really good to help Notre Dame uh, win the game against Duke, but they've had their two worst games back to back. They had a bunch of uh, very poor grades, four of the five had very poor grades against Duke. It's more poor grades this week coming out of the Louisville game. So I'm as worried about them from a mental standpoint as I am from a physical standpoint. You have to get them back up. You have to get them believing in themselves again and playing well again. I don't think they'll shuffle again, but I no. do think that Billy Strouth could be a guy that you pop in there. I think he played yep. well enough to do that. Another thing, Tim Jaden, great house. You know, we were talking before the game we about didn't. great house yeah. and Thomas, and we didn't think that they were completely ready. Thomas did play. Um, you know, uh, quite a bit, but Marcus Freeman revealed today that Jaden Greathouse just wasn't really quite up to speed they're, yet. They're going to need Greathouse, Thomas, and, you know, Merriweather, I guess, could have missed the Duke game with a hamstring injury, but they didn't have enough players. Uh, that We did see Tobias Merriweather on the bike before the Louisville game. I am told I didn't know if that was a thing he just happens to do before games. I'm told he's done it the last three games because he's been battling a hamstring injury. So they're not going to be healthy at that position until after the bye week. Yeah. It's, it's a difficult situation, but you have Faison now. You should have Greathouse in the mix after two weeks, you would hope, unless there's a setback in practice. And the one thing to add for me on the offensive line, let them fight it out all week, pick the starters, and your starters go unless there's something wrong. Yeah. That, that is what an offensive line has to be in week eight against USC. Last thing I want to cover here, the conversation did turn to USC, of course, and Caleb Williams. And, and I've been saying in recent weeks that there's no way they'll approach the pass rush with Caleb Williams like they did last year. And before I had a chance, I wanted to try to ask another question. But before I had a chance to ask it, Marcus Freeman said that you can't get behind Caleb Williams, which they did last year. They approached it coming from the outside. You end up chasing him from behind. And guess what? You're not going to catch him. No, you're not going to catch him. And we've talked about this repeatedly. Um, the edge discipline is not as consistent as it needs to be for Notre Dame, particularly on one side of the edge. Yeah. And so I think that's got to be a, a sticking point this week. I think Jalen Sneed is probably your only guy athletic enough at that second level to maybe use him as a spy from time to time against Caleb Williams and also allow Snead to just cut loose and try to get after Caleb Williams. Uh, but ultimately, Notre Dame's best defense is going to be rediscovering the offensive line yeah. that sets the tone and that can lay on a USC defense that if it's got it in it to be good, we haven't seen it yet. I mean, they've been really, really bad. They've been the team that was uh, – in danger of going behind in the fourth quarter at Arizona State a couple of weeks ago. They're the team that was very lucky to find a way to beat Arizona in the second or third overtime this week. So there are so many things there that point to this being Notre Dame's offensive line has to step up for its offense and its defense yeah. this week, arguably more so than any other yeah. game this season or in any other game in Marcus Freeman's tenure. My suggestion for holding the edge is to play Josh Burnham a little bit yes. more. I think he's do a fine job at that. That's it here from outside Notre Dame Stadium. Check us out on irishillustrated.com.